Hey everyone. I'm Sapriya, a senior cloud engineer from the innovation team. Today, let's talk about configuring compute auto scaling and setting up a periodic trigger to shut down or restart the instance pool. The auto scaling provides consistent performance for your end users during the periods of high demand and helps you reduce your cost during the periods of low demand. In this demonstration, we are not only going to see how you can configure the auto scaling but also we will see how you can periodically stop the instances in the pool by further lowering your cost please keep in mind the billing pauses when you stop the virtual machine with the standard and optimized shapes including the gpu 8 and series however the rest of the gpu shapes hpc and dense io shapes continues the billing for the stopped instances here is the end to end process flow Imagine a scenario where the existing instances can't handle the current demand. In this scenario, you would need to firstly create an instance configuration. An instance configuration is a template that defines the settings to use when creating the compute instances. You can use instance pools to create multiple compute instances from the same configuration and manage them as a group and finally create a auto scaling configuration. that automatically scales the number of instances in the pool in addition to that you can further reduce the billing expense by periodically shutting down the instance pool at 10 pm and starting the virtual machines at 10 am if you are not going to use any of the instances in the pool during this time period for which we will use the oci cli commands to start or stop the instance pool using the periodic trigger from visual builder studio now Let's look into the step by step process in detail. Log into the OCI console and select the navigation on the top left and then go to the compute and then instances. Give it a name. For the purpose of this demonstration, we are going to leave the image and the shape as is. Go ahead and create a virtual cloud network or pick an existing one. Now add the SSH key. You can either generate a key or upload an existing key. Now select create. The virtual machine will now be in the provisioning phase and then switches to the running state. We will now go ahead and create the instance configuration in order to define the settings to use when creating the compute instances. And now let's create an instance pool. Give it a name and the number of instances as 0 and hit the next button. Now Select the primary VNIC which we just created and select the subnet. Go ahead and click on the next button and review the instance pool. Go ahead and click on the create button in order to successfully configure your instance pool. One last step for auto scaling is to create an auto scaling configuration. Give it a policy name. Select the performance metrics as CPU utilization. In the scale out rule Select the threshold percentage. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will give the scale out threshold as 10% and scale in as 5%. Now, let's update the minimum number of instances, max number, and initial number of instances and hit the next button. Review the configuration changes and click create. The auto scaling configuration is successfully set up. Go ahead and copy the IP address of the instance created within the instance pool and SSH into the instance using the terminal. Make sure only owner of the file has full read and write access to the private key. Therefore, chmod 600 needs to be applied to the private key before connecting. Now install stress-ng in order to perform stress test. For which, write down the command sudo yum install stress-ng. We will now go ahead and perform the stress test. You'll notice that there is a slight change in pattern in the metrics of the instance pool. We currently have one instance, and we have configured the cooldown period of three hundred seconds. That is, the scaling between the events is minimum of five minutes. You will notice that the number of instances now is two. The test is now successful. We will now see how you can start or stop the instances in a schedule. In the OCI console, navigate to the Developer Services 
and then select Visual Builder Studio. Now, I've already created an instance before, so I'm going to open the Service Console. Here, I'm going to create a new project. Give it a project name and hit the Next button. Go ahead and select the empty project and click Next. Select the wiki markup as Markdown and hit the Finish button. All the project components will be configured for you. In the Organization tab, you need to configure the OCI account details with the Tenancy OCI ID, Compartment OCI ID, Home Region and Storage Namespace. This account is used to run your build executors. Next, we will go ahead and create a build executor template. It is a template that defines the operating system and the software installed on the build VMs. For this demonstration, we need an OCI CLI installed in order to execute the OCI commands. Then, we will need to create a virtual machine with the build executor in order to run the build with the build executor template. After we switch to the project we created, we will straight away create a build job. Give it a name as Start VM. Select the template as OCI CLI template and then hit the Create button. Switch to the Steps tab and add a step for OCI CLI configuration. Now go ahead and add the user OCI ID from the console by going to your user profile and copying the OCI ID from there. For your fingerprint, switch back to your user console and navigate to API keys. You can either download your API key or use an existing one. Copy the generated fingerprint and paste it in your OCI CLI configuration. For the tenancy OCI ID, switch to your OCI console and select the tenancy name from the human icon on the top right. Copy the OCI ID and paste it in your OCI CLI configuration. Next comes the private key. Navigate to the OCI API private key.pem file, which is located in your local machine, and copy the contents and paste it here. Select the appropriate region where your instance pool is located. Next, we will go ahead and add a Unix shell script. We will create a simple echo command to prompt the instance pool is going to start and add a OCI CLI command to start the instance pool. Here, we need to switch back to the OCI console, navigate to the instance pool which you just configured and paste the OCI ID in the script. And save the changes. Create another build to stop the virtual machine. Check the box to copy from existing build and pick the start VM build. Now, select the OCI CLI template and hit the create button. Update the echo command and OCI CLI Unix shell script to stop the virtual machine. Simple, right? Let's test it. All right, let me select the build now in order to check if the build is working. When you go back to organization tab and then the build executors, you will notice that the build VM is starting and can further check the logs. Once you go back to your build log and the build gets successfully completed, we can now verify that the instance pool is also stopped. After you start the start VM build, the instance pool is restarted successfully. The final step is to configure a periodic trigger to start the virtual machine at 10 a.m. UTC. Switch to the settings tab in the start VM job and add a periodic trigger. Uncheck the expert mode and select the minutes and hours schedule. You can verify the same in the time zone schedule. And now hit the save button. Now repeat the same steps for stopping the virtual machine. Make sure that the virtual machine is stopping at 10 p.m. UTC. We now successfully configured the periodic trigger to start and stop the instances each day.